as families tend to come together at this time of the year, I thought it's worth talking about, to be honest, our children, how we raise them and the connections we have, even the way we indulge, the way we treat them. I just think it's a really important conversation to be had because I've seen some content where, to be honest, I've been quite shocked. It's, it's a lot of toxic relationships out there. Um, especially between the parents and their children, even as their children grow up. And I'm looking on thinking, this is ridiculous. The trouble is, too many people, they are terrified of upsetting the hierarchy. So they follow tradition, even if tradition is not the best. So if when you have children, many people, they repeat the toxic patterns of their elders, um, considering it normal, standard. And it's like, it's not good at all. It's not really a good place to be, in my opinion. Um, so even just this little trend that's going on on TikTok at the minute where, where, where people swear. And some of the parents, they really get take exception. Now, this isn't just kids. This isn't kids doing it. This is ad, grown adults doing it to see their reaction from their parents. Now, I can understand a parent being disappointed and be a bit shocked and maybe, maybe having a, 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 a saying something in reaction. But I'm seeing a few videos where the parent, maybe they're quite older, but the parent gets physically reactive. And I'm like, that is mad. That is absolutely, that is mental to have that relationship with your child, even as they grow up. I think what a sad life. Like I know some people get used to it and they adapt and they, they consider it normal. And, the, you know, within the dynamic of a relationship, I understand that it's, it can be uh, unique. So what some, one person maybe thinks toxic, there's also an awful lot of love there that you don't get to see. And I understand that. But from the physical, the, the, from the urge to physically attack someone, even if it's a slap or whatever it is, it's like, my God, that's mad. I would never think to raise my hand to my daughter. And that's not me being all pandy pandy. I, 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 that's not the relationship we have. It's never needed to be like that. Um, you know, what I talk about and people reading my books, for instance, some people think you just you think you're high and mighty. You think you're this and that. It's not thinking anything. It's just the way I live. And it's the morals I hold on to. And by extension, it's getting passed down to her. So I'm a chain breaker. And I refuse. I refuse to be a toxic example for her. So I want to give her all the tools to value herself and not be scared of the world. I just I refuse it. I refuse it outright. She's not scared of me. The relationship we have is absolutely beautiful. Now, Sometimes I wish I could just share certain parts. Like we was having a, 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 a we've had a couple of um, FaceTimes because we don't live together and it's, it's a frustration for both of us. But we do have FaceTimes that can go on for absolute hours. But unfortunately, like WhatsApp, for instance, uh, just encrypts all the sound. So I couldn't even if I wanted to. Um, but she doesn't really like being um, showcased. She's got her own TikTok profile and things, but that's hers and it's not linked to me. And I, the reality is, I'm in the spotlight more. And there's a chance I'll be further in the spotlight in the future. And I don't want to push her any, any faster than is necessary, really. So that's why I, I don't share her profiles. So that's me respecting her privacy as well in that regard. Um, so anyway, like I said, people can have an opinion in the future or now or in the future and say, oh, blah, blah, blah. But one day, maybe they'll see the relationship we have together and you'll realize it's actually really beautiful. It's, it's like we're soulmates. Now, I'm spiritual, so there's a spiritual connotation, which I'm not going to put go too deep. But spiritual, but soulmates aren't always romantic. It can be, it can be a family member, it can be a friend. It's just like literally, you're that connected and in sync. It's a beautiful collaboration, and that's what it's like when we're talking together. Yes, I'm the role model. I set the example. I set the tone. But it's like we're best friends. That's the relationship we have. And it's you. Unless someone saw it, they wouldn't understand it. And that's the point. And that's really just what I want to convey to people, that that exists. She doesn't... It's almost like you struck gold, but it's because of the way she's been taught growing up. You know, I've always set an example. I've never encouraged her to be selfish, for instance. I think it's always important to have balance. If you want someone to play with you, then it's not important to be nice to others. Um, please thank you. They're just they're so... It doesn't cost anything and it only takes us a few seconds. You know, it's just something so simple. It's have manners, be respectful. Um, but of, of course, I, but on the other side of that, I, don't, I teach her to express herself. Don't be scared to, to vent. If you feel frustrated, if you feel something, don't hold it in. If, you're gonna, if you need to cry, cry. You know, that's the thing with me. She's free. She's literally free to be herself in everything she does. So 
effectively what I'm teaching her, she's 14, and what I'm teaching her as she grows older is to be accountable for herself and her actions. Um, so look, if she wants to make mistakes, understand there's, there's a consequence to that, but it's up to you if you're ready to, if you're prepared to bear that consequence. It's not for me to determine whether you should or shouldn't. But it's, it's, it's ingraining in them an understanding that you are responsible. So, so for instance, if someone behaves in a negative way, it's, you can't start blaming someone else that I behaved that way. It's like, no, you chose to behave that way and you're going to bear the consequence for good and bad of how you behave and the choices you make in your life. Um, I'll stand by her, whatever she does throughout her life. You know, as long as, she, as long as she feels it a calling to do something and follow that calling, you know. Um, so she gets an awful lot of trust from me. And that allows her then that freedom to express and be herself. And that pure side of herself is incredibly beautiful. She doesn't have to suppress it. She doesn't have to hide anything. Um, she's funny as hell. And I get to witness it because I get to be part of it. Because we've, we're, like, we're just two peas in a pod. You know, our, our humor is exactly the same, which is it is beautiful. And like I say, I, get to, I see these other people where they're terrified of their parents' reaction. The only thing my daughter would get is that I'm disappointed, for instance, if something really was that bad, it would like, you know, there's no way would I get physical with her for any, there's no, nothing that could really, that I could ever think would, would need me to get like that. It would, the only way that it would get like that is if, I mean, even then it would be to an, to, to an example, let's say you had a child, a baby, and, and, that, and, that, and that you had a, maybe your, your child's older, and they, they've hit that child who's very innocent. And then maybe at that point you get really angry and you're like, what the hell? Because you feel defensive. Like one's being attacked, one's not. One's being spiteful. Then, yeah, I get it. You, you're going to be reactive, but only to an extent of restraining them and trying to knock some sense into them, you know, like get control. Um, but that's to the limit, I think. But she hasn't even got that characteristic in her that I'd need to even be like that. So, <laughs> and again, it comes down to personalities, but it's also the way you, you raise your children. Your children are a reflection of, your, of their upbringing. That's how I think. She's an incredible example. So I know I know what I'm talking about because I always say this because people get defensive in my life. Like I said, they'll think you think you're up yourself or something. It's like anytime anyone's challenged me, I always just, my answer is just the results speak for themselves and she's the result. So tell, tell me what you would improve because <laughs> it's incredible. I'm very fortunate um, that she is receptive, you know, um, but it is who she is. But anyway, a couple of things like that I said about the confrontation there. But there's a couple of other things I do throughout the year, really, that I don't know. I get some people are obsessive, and I find that weird. It's like some people you'll see Christmas comes, and they'll make a mounting of presents, and it's it's insane. It's overwhelming. And I've spoken in the past that I don't actually think that's fair for children because they have to find somewhere to put those things, and they also have to tidy up the mess. And it's like if you've put a situation where they, they didn't ask for that level of mess, of course they're not going to say no to presents. But level of control will be helpful because I don't see the point of having a, a Christmas where they're excited when they open it and then a nightmare after where they're now crying or feeling insecure and vulnerable because they're now a parent is an absolute out of control because they don't like the mess. It's like you, you created that mess, though. You know, for me, it's like it's just ridiculous. It's all front. It's all a lot of, lot of people are like this. They put on a front. They try to perceive the. they show love in it through materialism rather than through who they are and the way your child reacts to you is an example of the relationship you have and um, so sometimes i'm disappointed when christmas comes in the fact that i can't provide her every my daughter like for instance everything i'd love her to have but again i'm very blessed in the fact that she, you know she would love to have so much but she never puts pressure on me she never ever puts pressure on me even if it's like pocket money for instance and I, and I can't do it one week or something and i'm struggling she's just she's understanding of that she doesn't have a, a, and it makes you just want to give her the world, you know. So, of course, I, I give her what I can when I can. Um, but I don't wait all year to give her things. You know, if she tells me, oh, I really want to get this and I'm going to wait, hopefully I'll get it for Christmas. I'm like, what is it you want? And if I've got, like, I, I might even have something lying around the house that I can give her that's the, that's the same. For instance, she wanted to, um, a record player. I think we were talking about vinyl records. And at one point I bought two two record players it was like cheap on ebay i tried asking family members did i found a good one do you want it do you want it is a link they didn't want to buy it and i thought that's too good a deal to leave it so i bought it and it was just lying around and i was like wait a minute it's got nice speakers as well but you know i'll find the speakers and i had to buy a connector for it and stuff so i still had to invest it again to get it working but i managed to give her that you know and that was only what about a month or so ago 
last month, Halloween. So that's like leading to Christmas. Um, she also didn't have a games console, and that's my own fault because I keep, I keep, you know, she shares mine and then I sell it when she's not with me because she. You, the problem we have is that she's only with me every few months, you know, for like holidays and things. And I felt bad because I'm like, you know, well, you should have a games console. So I bought her an Xbox, Xbox One X, which was like a hundred pounds. And it was only a few days. It arrived just a few days, but a couple of days before she was going home. And of course, the next time we see each other is Christmas. And I'm like, ah, oh, that's a bit annoying. Like, I didn't regret giving her it, but it's still a frustration that that could be another Christmas present. But at the same time, you know, it's, I'm not here to define our relationship by how many presents she gets at Christmas. She gets things throughout the year. So the point is, back in the end of October, she's got herself a vinyl record player that has built-in CD. She's really enjoying collecting now. She's got an Xbox One X in her bedroom that has built-in Blu-ray, DVD, Ultra HD. Um, so she's gone home. And I've also given her a load of DVDs, for instance. And and my next, and I haven't even got it now. I had an external DVD drive for my laptop that I need. or well, I, I do because it records as well. Um, and I, and I, she, I knew she wanted DVDs. And she always uses the MacBook to sort of watch content on, on her on the device so i gave her that as well you know and that's like 40 quid and it's i haven't replaced it myself so if i got something around the house i'll give it to her even if sometimes it's to my loss but it's like i can replace it later you take it with you because you know i'll get something in the meantime but she gets all these things throughout the year she's got an xbox a vinyl record player cd and she's also got that and then recently she said she wanted a cd player for christmas and i'm like I don't think Nan, your Nan, like my mum's using her CD player. I'll, I'll ask her, does she need it? Because if she don't, I'll, I'll, I'll ask her. And she hadn't been using it for ages. She actually stuffed it in a cupboard. And I was like, that's sorted. And again, I could have waited till Christmas and pretended I got it, but I don't like that shit. You know, it's my mum was did my mum didn't want it to be a present from her for Christmas because she would have getting her something. And I was like, I can't give you a present from someone else. That's that's just weird. So I'll just post it. So I posted it. So in the pace of a month, a month or so before Christmas, she's got loads of stuff. Um, and then, of course, I still feel compelled that I still have to give her things. And it's like we've got. And again, I, this is what I was saying. I think we all have different relationships with our children. I'm more. Tra I think I've just got an open, transparent relationship with her. And, and I love that. And I love that we do have that, because if we've got that at 14, it's going to be like that for the rest of her life. And I wouldn't want it any other way. And that's just the way it is. So. Um, it's not about keeping up appearances and trying to be what other people think is right. Um, it's like we was talking, like her mum, maybe, maybe, maybe her mum's got a routine for Christmas, but it's like, I'm not trying to undermine her mum, but it's like, I've got my own things too, and I don't really see the point. Um, so for instance, a stocking, I think I said, what's the stocking? Because I don't normally do stockings and stuff. I don't really, I, I'm not really up with everything. And she said, we do that on Christmas because mum don't want to get up early. So it's a chance for me to do um to open some presents for the stocking and i said well i was going to give you the stocking on christmas eve because and there's reasons i do this again it's not to undermine it's just my it's just my logic is it's how i how i would want my christmas so i said it's up to you i said but i'm happy to give you the the stocking on new, on christmas eve because then you've got something to open you know i you know whatever time you want to get up for christmas we get up i don't care you're gonna be tired <laughs> it's like i'm not gonna say i'm not gonna tell you to go and sit back down because again, and I think this is what, it, what I get back to at the beginning, it comes down to how you was treated. I, was, I wasn't treated horribly as a child, but there was rules, and I didn't always agree with the rules, and those rules frustrate me. I'm not a rule person. I hate it. I have to be free. You, 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 you pack me in like a sardine, and I lose my shit. So I know what it feels like, and I don't want that for her. So when she's excited on Christmas, and she wants to open a presents, Let's go and open these bloody presents. Let's go and have a good morning. Let's go and do this shit. I don't care what time it is. Let's do this shit. Every time you want Christmas to start, we're there. And that's how I'm doing it. It's her day, not mine. Well, obviously, it's, we all have to have a day. So it's, it's not a case of you just forgo your happiness. But it's not about, you know, it's not about the adults so much. Is it? If you've got children, it's about them. And I want her to enjoy it, not to sit there and feel like a prisoner for hours waiting for me to get my ass out of bed. Um, so I'm not doing that. Likewise, when Christmas Eve come around as a child, See, I wasn't the best child for Christmas. I could, you know, I'll tell you something in a minute. I'm probably a bit like Macaulay Culkin. Again, I don't like rules. <laughs> so I'm quite petulant. But um, Christmas Eve, I would ask my mum, like, can we open a present? Like, surely one present ain't going to hurt. My stepdad was very, very strict. He did not, he didn't agree with it. But in that instance, 
you know, you didn't want to cross him. But on that instance, it's like, I'm not letting go. You know, I want something. In the end, she'd relent and give it. Let, uh, finally, towards the end of the night, like, right, but really late. And it'd be something shit, like a pair of socks or something. <laughs> yeah, you son of a bitch. Um, but I don't want that for her, my daughter. I want her to have something on Christmas Eve. It doesn't have to be a lot, just something small, something she can just, um, even if it's just candy or something, you know, something, something nice that she can actually make use of. That's what I want. So I'll show what I did as a child. And I think the reality is there's consequences. When you tightly bound a child, there's a consequence to it because they're not always going to react how you want. So these are the things I used to get up to when I was little. And I, I, I don't feel bad. I don't feel bad and I don't care. It's wrong. But it's very wrong. So as a child, my parents would... There's enough of us. So there's like four or five, five kids at home, like things. So we, we can stay home sometimes when they go shopping, especially as we as te- come in teenagers and things. So they'd go grocery shopping, your food shopping on a Saturday or something. And, and sometimes the, so the, like some people put their presents under the tree like the night before Christmas or something. And then some put it for earlier. And, and mine was, all, ours was put up, put down earlier. But then sometimes you wake up on Christmas and there'd be a lot more presents. And it's like, oh, this is cool. Like if it's a bike or something. But for the most part, presents under the tree. So they go shopping and <laughs> my brothers caught on because they watch me and they were like, you're nuts. And I'm like, no, 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 no shh. <laughs> <laughs> so for instance i'm a gamer i'm a bit of geek bit of a nerd always love gaming and they didn't have a clue about gaming so like if i ask for a video game for christmas or something i i know where i'm honing in i know where i'm looking you know i know the shape of course i know the shape and i would just uh, I, I would delicately open it with the sellotape you know i'd open the tape and i'd pull it out then i'd take the disc out because obviously back then it was all discs of course you've got playstations and things now but pc was discs it was a PC game, I think, or maybe a game console, I can't remember. Did it each year. <laughs> so I take the disc out and then I put and then I close the case, put it back in its pack, seal it, put it back under the tree. Then I'd go up up to the bedroom and then I'd go and play the game. Then they would come home from shopping and I'm still playing the game because they don't have a clue what that game looks like. <laughs> Did do it with everything, but I don't feel shame for this shit. I needed that. Um I'm quite rebellious. Now, am I teaching her to be rebellious? No. Um, she's far more naturally disciplined than I am. So let me think, she's got her own personalities, you know. But the one thing I don't ever want, as a, especially as a female, I don't want her to ever feel like she can't come to me and t- to tell me something that maybe makes her vulnerable or feel insecure. I want her to feel like, you know, you could say it, because even though I can have a fiery nature, I actually am very understanding. And when it comes to her, I am. You know, and I, and I always make it clear to her, people make mistakes. You can't, do not expect to walk through life being perfect. It's not going to happen. We all make mistakes. We've got to learn somewhere. Um, so, yeah. So I, but I teach her manners too, you know? So, for instance, through the separation we go through, we've been through family call. It's traumatic. She struggles sometimes, like, quite deeply. Gets incredibly emotional. But I'm teaching her how to handle that, how to cope with a situation, you know? See the light at the end of the tunnel, the bigger picture, and all these things. And it empowers her, and it helps her. Keeps her grounded, you know, and coping with the situation at hand rather than overwhelm yourself and explode. It's like we see each other. So cope. I always tell it, try and tell it, focus on school, but she don't like school. But there's, there was a period, just even just last year, where she's getting in arguments left, right, and centre with teachers. And I said, your problem's the same as mine, but you have to channel it better. I said, you don't like being told what to do, and I don't like being told what to do. I said, but there is a time and a place when to when to speak up and stand up for yourself, and when to let things go. Like, you don't have to be confrontational just because you can. You don't have to look at a situation and go, look, I'm smarter than you, so I can, I, I'm, I'm just going to put you in your place. I said, sometimes it's easier just to let people think what they think. You don't actually have to it'll get to a point where you don't even need to prove anything. You can, in, you can innately know you've got the answer to this situation or this, this, but sometimes it's not even worth speaking on it. Um, so you know why someone's doing something. So, for instance, I was talking to her about behavioral patterns. If there's bullies at school, a lot of them, maybe they don't have a nice home life, so they're jealous. Um, especially considering of our relationship, you know, there's some people that just don't have that, and it will make it literally it will frustrate the life out of them because they don't have that connection to their parent. Um, it is what it is. So I'm teaching her that people people's reaction to you, or it says more about them than it does about you, um, unless of course you're doing something negative. But if you're not, it's just a reflection of themselves. So effectively, when you're walking around school and you see so, so much negativity, so much hate, so much anger, you only have to watch the person and then recognize that, you know, there's a lot of hurt in them. 
So don't take it personal. So now your self-esteem don't get hit because you realize that you're, you, you, it's not that you're not worthy of anything or, or you're not good enough. It's that that person's just so unhappy that they, they want others to feel similar so they don't feel so low. You know, because if the vibration's low, then everybody can feel the same, you know, and then it don't feel so weird and you don't, don't feel so lonely. So people naturally try to lower people to feel comfortable when they're low. Um, so, yeah, as, as, you know, so as great as she is, she sometimes does feel lonely because she hasn't got enough of her type of people around. And I said, again, I'm trying to teach her that school. Try not to let it overwhelm you too much because school is such a small period of your life. It feels like everything, but then you're free. I said, it, it, like I've been in and out of jobs through my life. And I've said to her, people will tell you that's a bad thing. And they'll make it look like you, you're something wrong with you. And it's not. It's just that you haven't found the place where you can settle yet. I said, and that's what it's like for me. So if, I don't, if I'm not happy somewhere or there's a disrespect or people not investing in me, like I'm not staying. So I'll go in with all the best of intentions to a position. But if I'm not going to be respected there or I don't get the opportunities I feel I deserve or I'm overlooked or whatever the reason, I'm not going to keep myself in a toxic environment. I'm not going to keep myself small for others to be comfortable. I'll tell them. I'll warn people. I'm going to end up leaving if it stays like this. I give people the opportunity to change. And when they don't change, I change. I change situations. So I said to her, like, you can't, maybe through school, you can't change it too much. You're a bit stuck. So all you can do is cope with what's in front of you, you know, rather than let it overwhelm you too much. It's a period of your life to learn. So use the environment to learn. If there's a lot of negativity there, look at, look at why that happens. And then you'll become intelligent from it, emotionally intelligent. It helps us navigate through life, you know, and then when you overcome similar situations as an adult, you'll be reading people like a book. And I think she just took that challenge on board and just like ran with it. And it's like now she just sees everything like it's even school is school, you know, but in a different way. It's like school isn't just there to learn off the chalkboard and from the teacher. It's now watch everyone, including the teachers. You know, she's even talking to me about specific teachers and the fact that I think she's seeing even as an adult, they have an insecurity. A teacher isn't really as intelligent as they think. And they have a lot of emotional insecurities because there's imbalances and things. And it's like, that's, that's interesting because I'm listening to her analyze, you know. It's like, yeah, okay, yeah, I'm getting it. I see where you I see that. Or I let her, maybe let her finish while I'm analyzing in my head. I'm like, well, could be this, could be that. But it's nice that you've got someone with intellect, you know. And the trouble is when you're surrounded by maybe people of low intellect, you can feel lonely because it's like, this is. Why am I so different? But it's different. I see it as different in a good way. So um, I know I've derailed slightly with this, but hopefully it's come across the fact that it's not about following the patterns of the past, but create your new way forward. And yeah, so like, I've cut off an awful lot of people from my life, especially family members. Uh, it's because they don't deserve to be in our lives anymore. So I'm, I'm building a new future of stability. Um, really a brand new framework for me and my daughter to thrive. And I can't, I, can't, I can't consider anything else more important, you know. And I know I'm doing it right because I'm watching her grow. I've seen her be this bright, funny, vibrant, whimsical um, child who people just gravitated towards her to someone who become quite isolated, quite vulnerable, um, really lost when we, through our separation, it hurt her a lot. She kept drawing upon moments. She was like, I should never have gone, like, for instance, she had to stay at grandparents' home, and she always says it. She even says it today. Why, 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 like, I, shouldn't, I, I shouldn't have gone, or what would have happened if I didn't go? And I said, to be honest, it's, if it didn't happen that day, I probably would have happened another So. Um, sometimes, you know, you don't have all the answers and you have to let them figure it out for themselves too, you know, because I've been going through, I, I, you know, I have my trauma to carry and I have to process it too. And when I figure out a heal, a heal from it, I try I then impart that to heal her, you know, um, but sometimes we don't always have the answers. You have to just look, like continue living. Um, but like I said, there's been so many things. It was heartbreaking for me to witness her lose that light. You know, it always shone through when we finally sit, when we're finally together and we're having fun and it's like, then it would ooze out and it's beautiful. But it's that breakdown every time she leaves, you know, it would just be, she'd be in tears and just 
clinging and not wanting to leave, you know, and, and you're dealing with the, that that trauma. So I think maybe from that trauma as well. But we always had we always had the bond way before that anyway. That's why we're inseparable. We've always been inseparable, even from the moment she was sort of born, you know. And it's been a relationship that's continued all the way through. But we share the same traumas as well. But I wouldn't say it's a trauma bond though, because that's what I was about to say. Maybe it's a trauma bond, but it's like no, no, because the relationship was already that strong before the trauma. It's just the trauma never broke us. I think that's the reality. Um, so we can truly relate to each other because we've literally lived a very similar path, even through the, the chaos, you know. But like she's starting to really get back to her vibrant side now. And it's, it, it, for me, that's really beautiful to watch, to see her healing. That's what's been um, really nice because there was a fear. There was a fear that, you know, as strong as I am and as strong as she can be, there was relapses with her and it was like, oh, she may need therapy as she gets older. And I genuinely thought that, that I can help to a point, but sometimes you need someone impartial, someone who's not really um, known to you. But then she has this trust, a lack of trust in people because she relied on, she was vulnerable with people who should have had her best intentions, you know. So when you're going through court, for instance, and, and she's dealing with people through court who are supposed to be there to support her and listen, they weren't listening to her. And then they, and then in court, they'd say that she's just too, she does, she's too young to understand the consequences. Even though she's a very mature child, she did understand the consequences. And again, that still bothers her today. And she's had that a few times to the point now where she doesn't trust people she doesn't know. And that's what the court system has done to her, you know. Um, so although in my mind, I'm thinking she could have done with therapy when she's older, if need be, I, I'm not sure she would open up. And it's the reality. But fortunately, I've been watching her become more vibrant, more herself. She's healing. And I don't, I no longer feel she needs that. I think she just needs to continue growing, have new experiences, and then she'll transcend the situations. Um, but yeah, she's had enough trauma for, I would argue, for a lifetime. And that time she got the chance to be free and happy. Um, and yeah, I've always tried to do things the right way. And the like, last thing I'm going to do is put more pressure on her. You know, it's just, all I do is teach her there's consequences and watch those around you for good and bad. You know, is that do you, when someone does something or they react in this way or they've got an opinion on that? What does, what does that, how does that make you feel? What do you think about it? You know, is that something you think is a good way or a bad way? Or is it something you think maybe you just, it just doesn't align with you or does it make sense? Because then it starts to be, you start to build knowledge from that. Is it something you want to replicate or is it something you want to learn from and make sure it doesn't happen again? Um, because one thing I have said to her, I've said, if, if I can just tell if you just learn one thing from all of this, and, I, and this is what I said, I said, if you ever have a child with someone, I said, never, ever, never use that child as a weapon against your, against the other person. I said, cause it's cruel. I said, and you, it's not fair for the child. So if you have a daughter or, or a son, that should be your focus. It just, it should only be about them, you know? You don't have to like someone after they've left. Um, but you should love your child enough that you're not trying to hurt the other, you know? And that, that's one thing I would really instigate. With everything else, I would leave it to be free. And I can't control that to an extent. But I think from what she's been through, I think she's smart enough to know that anyway. Um, and, she, you know, we all know our children, like, deep down. And she's just got an incredibly kind heart. And it's just, like I said, it's a shame I can't show it to the world. So I would love to. I'd love to do our live chats when we're chatting and just broadcast it live so everybody can just see. And we're just like, no, a bit like the Truman Show, you know, you, you're not thinking the camera's there, but sadly it's not a window I can give to people. But we have that time together, you know, and it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a moment in time when both of us are purely happy. And it's, it's nice because we both carry trauma, but also carry an immense amount of love. And, um, yeah, I want to impart her the best morals, not trauma or baggage. <laughs>